Hi friends. Hi. My parents just left yesterday. We just took them to the airport and I'm sure most of you have been following their adventures, all the videos, all the vlogs we had documenting their whole experience here. And I know that you guys had so much fun watching them. Thank you for all the really lovely comments that you left. But I thought now that they're gone, especially since they're so freshly gone, they just left yesterday, I thought it would be a good idea to give you our general thoughts on their trip. And first of all, so Imabel, just an overall general impression. What was it like for you having my parents visit? It was an awesome experience for me, very priceless. And I would say this is one of the best, or even the best of best trip ever that I had with you and of course with them. And for me, I think it was, they were here about two weeks, maybe a little bit less. It was, honestly, it was probably the best time of my entire life. And I, maybe I can speak for you. I think it was at least one of the best times for your entire life. It is. I, for my parents, definitely. They had a, the most fun they've ever had, I think, in their life is when they came out here. They'd never been overseas. The only other country they'd been to is Canada, and they're from North Dakota, so that borders Canada. So it's not like that was even, you know, much of a trip. But this is their first time overseas, outside the outside of North America, and I mean, there's a lot for them to take in, and they had a really great experience. And the reason they had such a great experience is actually probably mostly thanks to her. Imabel organized their trip. Imabel, this is one of the areas where she really shines. In fact, she does this professionally. She's did this for other people as a job. But this first, this was very personal because it's my parents, and they're meeting her for the first time. But she made the hotel reservations. She decided where we should go. And once we went to these places, I was a pretty good tour guide myself. That's kind of where I shine, as she does as well. She's also very good at that. But Imabel, let me just say thank you so much for handling my parents' trip and doing such a great job. My parents were so thankful to you and so impressed with everything that you did in terms of your organization and giving them all those really great, unique experiences. Well, it is my great pleasure to do that for them, for you, for the family. And I'm glad that they enjoyed it, they enjoyed the trip. And even before they came to the Philippines, I really told Travis, let's make this trip a very special trip for them. And thankfully, it went very well. And I have to say this, growing up, I traveled a lot with my parents, mostly around the Midwest in the United States, but these weren't vacations. We didn't really take vacations hardly at all when I was living with my parents growing up. My parents don't really take vacations. When I traveled with them when I was young, when I was a kid, it was for wrestling. And that's not really a trip that you can enjoy. For one thing, sometimes you have to make weight and you have to starve yourself and dehydrate yourself on the way there. And then once you're there, you have to focus, you have serious focus on, on the wrestling turn on business. So they weren't pleasure trips. This is one of the few real vacations that my parents has ever taken in their lives. And you and I, we generally, we don't really take vacations either. But this is just such a great experience to take the to take a whole big family vacation together, and they got into Manila. We had we only had basically a day in Manila before we made another trip. So we went and did some of the tourist stuff in Manila. We went to Intramuros. We went a few other places. We went to Mall of Asia so they could see the beautiful sunset. And then from there, where did we go? We went to Legaspi. That was the first out-of-town trip for them in the Philippines. And why did we go to Legaspi out of all the places yes. in the Philippines? Yes, we went to Legaspi because they visited their sponsored child. They've been sponsoring a kid in Legaspi. Actually, she lives a town. It is an hour away from Legaspi City. And Up in the mountains. Yes. We had to climb the hill <laughs> to meet her. Although in 2010, Travis and I got to meet her and her family we already. Visited just the two yes, of us. we visited them. And finally, your parents got to visit her on this trip. And, and that was, this, this was actually pretty much the main reason for their coming. I mean, of course, also to, to visit us. But 
that the, you know, my dad's wanting to meet this little girl for so long and her family and my parents were beyond impressed with these people. The treatment that we received, my parents did not expect that. We had like a whole, they had all this food prepared. They had signs prepared welcoming them and us. And my, my parents just didn't expect that. My dad was just so happy. He said after that it was easily one of the most fulfilling times of his life having that experience. Yes, and it's something that mom and dad really looked forward to and seeing their happy faces, seeing how, yeah, how fulfilled they were, it just makes me happy as well. And the, the family, the, their sponsored kid and her family were so happy, they were so thankful to see them, to meet them finally. and. You know, I mean, they live a very simple life. They're not rich materially, but they were able, we were able to feel that warmth and appreciation from them when we went to their place. And my dad also, when we were in Legaspi, he really loved the hotel that we stayed in, which is a hotel that's fairly new, only about a year old. Yes. And you booked that hotel, you took care of everything. And my dad was just so happy with that. He, he loved that place that you, that you chose. I know. Well, before I chose that, I had to check out other options, other hotel options in Legaspi, and I also had to ask a friend who usually goes there, and that was a recommendation. And, you know, whenever people say that something is good, it could really be very good. And she wasn't wrong. We all enjoyed the place. You did a lot of research place. with it. You really yes. got in depth. I had it. to call the hotel. I had to check whatever they have, the rates, and other things. And it just turned out very good. And from Legaspi, I mean, that was actually, we were there like, what, two, three two days? Two nights. Two nights, three yeah. days, basically. Yeah. Uh, my dad had the time of his life, really, especially. We did other things besides meeting the, mm -hmm. the kid that he sponsors and their family. But that was death. That was the main reason. Yes. And that was the highlight from there. We flew back to Manila, mm -hmm. only for about a day. But then we met someone very special to not only me, but to you, Lance Raimundo, who's, I've been friends with going back at least 10 years now. I've been friends with him. I've kn and you've known him like nine years. As long as I've known you. <laughs> yeah, because we, me and him were together when we met yes, you. Yes, it is through him that I met him. But we met Lance Raimundo, we went to Vikings Buffet, and if you're from the Philippines or Metro Manila, you probably know what Vikings is, and you probably have enjoyed their food there. But he took us out to Vikings, the whole family, and my dad couldn't, you know, him and my dad almost couldn't stop talking. They enjoyed I each know. other's company <laughs> so much. My dad talked and told him about all these things that he didn't really know about, but he was very interested in. Yes. And to me, that was also very special because Lance Raimundo is someone that's special to me, special to you. Uh, he's really like family to us. And, uh, you know, my parents have actually talked to him before, not even on Skype, before there was a Skype. I remember I was visiting my parents in, in North Dakota one time, and they, we had to talk through Yahoo Messenger. That's before Skype took off, and we did the webcam thing. Mm -hmm. so, and you did that with my parents, too, as well. Yes. That that's, was their experience with you, basically, before me and this, that kind of online experience. Yes. But after that day in Manila, which was, you know, we, we went to Mega Mall, then Green Hills. We, had, we flew again on another trip, and where did we go? This is something that you completely organized everything on. Yes, I thought since they, they were here for a limited time, wish, we, we could, wish they could have stayed longer. It was less than two weeks. I told Travis that I think they should see the different you know, at least a few places in the Philippines. So they've, they've gone to Luzon, that's Legaspi and Bicol and Manila, and then a few places in the Visayas. So we flew to Cebu City. Cebu City, yeah, the second largest city in the Philippines, a city that has a really good reputation. But we did, we, we weren't there real long. We were there, what, two, one, one night, yeah. basically kind of about one a day and a half yes. is what we were there. And you rented a private van for us. You got it at a really great price. 
which was really, I think, the way to see it because we got to see a lot of stuff that if we were just taking taxis or didn't know any locals, uh -huh. we would have really missed out on. And the really special thing, I think, not only for me, but for my dad, mm -hmm. was uh, it's a place that you recommended, right? The Temple of Leia? Yeah, and thankfully the place Temple of Leia is open to the public for for tourists and but it hasn't been open long right yes it's it pretty just, new so most people yes. don't know about it i know dad was very amazed by the place He's, i was amazed by it too. yeah i was amazed too and he even said like this would take many more years to complete it but at that stage it's already it's so already. beautiful it's fascinating like you know, if you go there, there's nothing like that in the Philippines, I would say. Exactly. If you go there, it's like you're not even in the Philippines. It's like it's you're like, in Europe. Yeah, it's like you're in Greece. That's what it looks like. Even though it's not fully completed, I think they said it's going to be completed in like 2021 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I can't remember But like exactly. I said, I don't think a lot of people know about that place yet. It's fairly new that it's open as a tourist, a tourist attraction. And... Uh, and let me just add to that. The guard there was so was so nice. They were actually clo they were closing the gate when I when we got there. It was heavily raining, and I just talked to the guard and requested if we could still get inside and check it out. And thankfully, he gave us the permission. But we couldn't leave the place sooner because of the heavy outpouring of the rain. But at least we got to spend, you know, a little bit more time inside and just feel well, the ambience there. The reason we got in and the reason that we get into so many places, even getting into the airport with them, is because you work your magic, <laughs> you get things done, you have a way, and that's part of what's really special about you, Imabel, is that there's just something about you. It's like you don't take no for an answer. You always, whenever there's a problem or an obstacle, you find a way. You don't just give up or say, well, that's the way it is. You, and and uh, I guess I kind of wish that I had that, but it's lessons that I'm learning from you. And another thing that my dad, you talked about your friends helping us. My dad was always commenting. Usually when you weren't around, he was saying, I can't believe how many people know Imabel. Everywhere we go, even outside of Manila, we just run into people that happen <laughs> to know you. Every like little town or city like that we went to, there's always people. Imabel, it's you, you know. And like, my dad couldn't believe like how popular you are. I would say it's a blessing. It's just a blessing to be able to have friends, you know, just know people around and just think. Of, I think one thing that that motivates me to do to be able to do this is is being able to make other people happy being able to do something for others because it's not just for me it's for others and when you see when you see people smile when you see them happy because you've done something you know for that or you've contributed something it's it's just a fulfilling experience a fulfilling feeling yeah and uh we did a lot more in cebu but i'm going to wrap that part of up we had a great time down there but then we did something that we, we moved on to another city and we got there because of a way that you organized our transportation to the next city and what, what happened was you booked us a private cabin on a boat going from Cebu to Calbayog City, Samar, which is your hometown. Yes. And you booked that, you got us great rates on this private private room. The room was so nice. Then we had an issue there where we were in the room, having a good time, enjoying ourselves, taking photos of our nice room. It was the, literally the nicest room yeah. on the thing and the only one that could accommodate four people. Uh -huh. So that was it. That was but, the only cabin that could accommodate four people, right. But then we had a little problem where another guy showed up and he said, Hey, I booked this place. I already paid for it. I reserved it over a week mm -hmm. ago. and." We were worried then, oh, are we going to lose the room? Even though they say uh, possession is 90% of the law. So we should be good in terms of that we were there first. We got it. Like, yes. you know, we, we checked in, like, uh -huh. with the employees of the boat. Uh -huh. They checked us into it, and we were already in there and enjoying ourselves. We already ourselves. had a key. But then he showed up. Then he's like, I booked this a week ago. And he, this guy really wanted the room. And one of the employees 
was going to go to the head office before the ship leaves to get this thing sorted out. Mm -hmm. And you left with him. And then I'm like, okay, I know we're going to get it because Imabel went. The other, the other group, they didn't send anyone. It's, it's like my dad said, we had like a lawyer going with us. We had representation. They didn't send anyone. And I know the type of person you are. It's funny, my mom, just to be nice, she wanted to just give it up to this guy. And really, you don't know if he's making up his story about booking it a week ago or whatnot. He's probably telling the truth, but you just really don't know. But, but the fact is, we were there first, and we checked in with the, the staff of the boat. But you went, and I was very confident that we weren't going to lose the room. Mm -hmm. and, but my mom, she's like trying to be nice and diplomatic. She was ready to just hand it over to these people. My mom's a very nice lady. Yeah, and, uh, but I didn't want to do that. My dad didn't want to do that. You didn't want to do that because, hey, we were there first, and we also we'd paid for it and everything. But you went down there, and I was saying to my dad, my mom stayed out with the other guy that wanted to get the room, which I thought is kind of, you know, like, and I can just hear my mom talking to him. She's being very nice. The one thing I knew is maybe he won't mind giving it up for us because my mom is such a nice lady, and, you know, <laughs> talking about his kids and uh -huh. stuff. But you went there, and I was telling my dad, it's going to be okay. Imabel's going to take care of it. I have complete faith in Imabel. This is what Imabel does. This is where she shines even though my mom was making me nervous, because my mom, I could tell, was one step away from just saying, oh, you just take the room. <laughs> and, uh, but what was, what's really funny, a couple things. While my mom was outside talking with us, I me and my dad stayed in the room, but right outside the door, we could hear everything. And another family showed up, and they said, hey, we booked this room. We're supposed to be in there. So it's like the ship kind of had a mistake where they booked it three times but there was some kind of technical reason for that that you later found out. But so it was booked like three times and two other families wanted the room that we were in, but I knew you were gonna deal with it. You took care of it. And at that moment, Imabel, in front of my parents, I was so very proud of you, of the job that you did and how you handled it. You always handled things so great. But I, like I told my dad, when, when I knew that you were going to take care of it, I have 100% faith in you, I know it's ours, because I know how you operate in those situations. But what's really funny is, the funniest thing of all is the, the first guy that came for the room that my mom was talking to, he tried to bribe a porter, which <laughs> porters, I don't even think they're employed by the boat. They're just guys that help you carry your bags onto the ship and then want money in exchange for that. But they don't work for the company as far as I know. And by no means do they have the power to dictate who gets what room? So the guy, the, the guy my mom was talking to, he gave a bribe right in front of my mom, this sweet old lady from North Dakota, and my mom had never seen anything like that. She was completely shocked at this because she told us this whole story later. And I told my mom, hey, you're bribing the wrong guy. You should be, if you want us to leave that room, you should try and pay us to leave it. You know, she should have said that. My mom's not that outspoken of a lady. Mm -hmm. And I was also trying to tell my mom, don't even stay out there with that guy. Don't talk to him. Just let Imabel take care of it. You're not from here. You don't understand things. But she completely ignored my advice, of course, because she has to be nice. But my mom was so shocked at that bribe. But I'm glad that she could see that just to know how things work in other parts of the, the world. But what's funny is she, he tried to bribe a porter, and he only gave him like 50 pesos. That's so cheap. That's only just a little over a dollar. And my dad, when he heard the story, my dad said, like, he gives him this little bit of money to this little porter guy. What's he expect the guy to do? Go kick out two big American wrestler guys? Hey, you guys get out of here. You know, of course he's not going to do that. So the guy, the porter took the money, I guess. But then he said, this isn't enough. And then the other guy trying to make the bribe, he said, you're not getting any more. I mean, but apparently this guy making the bribe, not only was my mom shocked that he openly bribed right in front of her, but she was shocked that he had no shame whatsoever, no embarrassment that I'm just going to do this right in front of your face. I'm going to pay this guy to go kick your family out of that room. And it's also funny because we ran into that guy the next morning and he comes out, we, ru we run into him in the morning, right before we're going to get off the ship. Oh, good morning. You know, did you guys sleep well? And my dad goes, yep, something like that. And then he's like, oh, I didn't. You know, trying to make us feel guilty and stuff. And it's like, dude, that's really lame and cheesy. Don't try and guilt us, you know. And, you know, we were there first. 
I mean, I, I understand his side of it. It's not right, maybe, if you really did book that room and pay for it. It's not, you know, I, I feel for him. But then I don't feel for him when he, when he acts like that. And, you know, the way he acted in front of my mom, I don't have sympathy for that dude. I guess the room was ours. It was our blessing because you're our blessing. So thank you for that, Imabel. My, my dad, he'd said he'd always want to take a cruise his whole life. And I remember even growing up, my dad's like, oh, I'd like to take mom on a cruise someday because you'd always see the commercials for it. And my dad also, you know, you'd watch that show Love Boat. Mm -hmm. you know, so he thinks of things like that. This wasn't quite like the Love Boat, like my dad said, but it was so awesome. And part of what was awesome was just staying in all in the same room really close. You and me with both of my parents, you know, like, side, like in beds, like so close to each other. It's really such a close feeling to have, especially when time is limited. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, there was... A couple nights where we slept in separate rooms, I guess, when we were in Legaspi. But other than that, we were pretty most of the time we were all in the same room together. And I mean, I think that just added to the trip. I know you enjoyed that too. Yeah, it, it's, I would say it was a very nice family bonding. And I personally, I got to know them better. And that's something that I'm happy for. And Knowing them better, spending time with them just made me appreciate Travis more and you know I, I just feel so blessed being able to meet them finally and even spend time with them and with with the boat thing, I think mom was just trying to to be nice. That's how she is. Yeah, she was trying to be she nice. She will be nice to other people at the expense <laughs> of her own family. And then but what I was telling you guys last time is that as a Filipina, it was really very embarrassing to know that a Filipino would bribe someone in front of mom who was actually, he could be the victim of his bribery. <laughs> you know what I mean? So in Filipino, we have this word delicadeza, like he could have done it in a discreet manner, but he just really did it there. And mom even said that was... It was kind of a, a, an act of arrogance, really, yeah. doing that, to show, hey, this is my, maybe it was something like, this is my country, this, I know how things work here. I'm going to give this guy 50 paces. He's going to go kick your family out of, tell them to get out of that room. Mm -hmm. But hey, didn't work that way, did it, buddy? Yeah, and then mom was traumatized by that. <laughs> That's what she said. But I'm, like I said, I'm glad that she saw it. It just made the trip more interesting. Yeah, exactly. And well, I guess the lesson there is don't just rush to bribe someone. Try to do it. You know, in a pure, in a way that just have your pure heart work it out. <laughs> and then I even called the booking office to make sure I said, remember, remember last time when I booked it, it was still available, right? Because he even, he even saved it. Because here's a, another thing that I could share with you guys is, I inquired at the booking office if they honor senior citizen discounts. We also for, got a discount. You got yes, a discount for my fans. For yes. sing, for twenty percent for non-Filipino senior citizens. Others, other business establishments do not honor, do not give senior citizen discount if you're not a Filipino, if you don't have a local senior citizen ID. But in fairness to that shipping company and that booking office, they gave senior citizen discount to mom and dad. So it was really cool. And after that, after that interesting boat ride, it was actually just, you know, despite that little bit of drama, it was such a, a pleasurable trip, actually. Yes. I wouldn't have even, to me, I wouldn't have even minded a longer trip because I liked the room so much uh -huh. and staying there with my parents. But we arrived in Kelbayak City, your hometown. We met your family. And my parents really got to bond with your family, get to know your family yes. there. And... What do you think of that, that they all got to meet up? It's it's just, it was like a dream for me. It was like surreal, but but thank God for that. Thank God for such a wonderful blessing. And this is something I really, I will always treasure for my, you know, in this lifetime. It's something that really brought the families close together. And on our last day there, we went to the we went to the beach, not with just with immediate family, but with uh, cousins, aunts, yeah, uncles, friend, family such. friends. And uh, that was my mom's first time ever getting into the ocean. She'd never touched an ocean. You got to understand. And my dad had never seen an ocean until he visited me in California. 
when he was already like late 50s by then. That was his first time seeing an ocean. But you gotta understand, my parents are from North Dakota and the geographic center of the continent of North, Di of North America is actually in North Dakota. And what that means basically is it's the furthest place from an ocean on the entire continent. That's basically where they live. So you guys understand it's hard for them to get to an ocean, but mom finally got to swim in an ocean after, you know, well over six decades <laughs> of life. But it's never too late, even for this whole trip. They, it was late in life, but it was it's one never of, too late. It's one of the, the greatest experiences ever. And uh, the let. How about the hot spring? Yeah, we went to some hot springs, but we did all kinds of stuff down there. We were down there probably about the longest, like three, three, nights. Did, three nights. Yeah. But the important stuff was we spent time with your family. Then we came back to Manila, Quezon City, for about a day. Yes. We got to see UST, your old school, because we went to the school, where you're, the university where your mom teaches and where you used to teach. In Calbayog. In Calbayog. And uh, so they saw your old school, we did some, some other fun stuff, and right the night before they left, my, my dad took you on an unexpected shopping trip. I know. Unplanned for all of us, even for him, because you wanted to go get him like a souvenir to surprise him, but we walked into the wrong section of the store, but on the mannequin there was this really pretty pink dress that I liked that I was looking at, and my dad says, hey, you like that dress? Why don't we get that for Imabel? And that kind of started off. Then we went and we looked at that. Then my dad ended up buying you several dresses. Exactly. And my dad was saying, you know, I didn't have a daughter growing up, so I didn't get to do this for a girl. Now I have Imabel, she's my daughter, and I can finally do this. So my dad just had a blast picking out all these dresses and clothes and things to buy you, uh, to help you like have a new wardrobe and be, look like the classy woman that you are. And, I mean, what, like, you didn't expect that. You were, I didn't you were... expect it, and I was just, I didn't, I, I didn't expect it. It was, a, it was a great surprise for me, and it was fun seeing Dad and Travis pick the dresses, the clothes, and then I was just trying to try them on, and they'd say if they look good or not. There was even this one yellow, fancy-looking dress. That, mom, that dad liked, and Travis didn't really like it that much. And eventually, Dad still got it. Well, after I saw it. it on you, after I saw it on you, I changed my yeah, mind. Yeah, so Dad crazy. still got it. I came to a point like, I think this is this is enough. This is enough. But Dad insisted, like, let's, you can still get that. So I was like, okay. And I, I kept saying thank you so much to Mom and Dad because I didn't really expect that, that gift from them. And you... Yeah, you didn't expect it, but my dad was just having too much fun buying that stuff for you. Buying you those dresses and seeing how they looked on you and it just gave him such a thrill because it's like you said, he didn't have a daughter to do that for over the years, but now he finally does have a daughter with you. And then we had to, the day we had to take him to the airport, that was very hard to say goodbye. Uh, for me, for my parents, but I think most of all actually for you. Yeah, I was like, wish they could have stayed longer. Like, I was already, you know, I was getting them, I was getting to know them better, and I know that Travis hasn't spent a lot of time with them through, through the past few years, so it was more like I haven't seen up, them since 2011. Yeah, like catching up and all that, and I just felt like I, I really started getting close to them, like family, it just made me realize the family is such a priceless blessing to all of yeah. us. And while they are around, while we are here still, let's show them all the love we could show them, right? And <clears throat> you were really getting teary-eyed when they were leaving, I mean, you know, Dad, my parents didn't want to leave you either. Um, you're really someone that's so special in their life now. Uh, so, and I've shared that with them. And even today, all day long, she's been saying, I miss you, I miss mom, I miss dad, you know, like all day long. And uh, to me, that's really sweet to hear. I miss them too. Yeah, <laughs> now I'm gonna cry. <laughs>
I miss I miss the voice of dad and mom talking. She was just saying earlier today, like, can you play some videos so I can hear their voices? And it was really just the, the best experience, I think, for all, for all of us. And Imabel, thank you so much for making it happen. And thank you, mom and dad, for coming. And thank you for watching these videos and sharing in the whole experience. And I'm glad to see your comments, that you're having fun watching this and learning so much. So thank you guys for sharing and partaking in all these experiences with us. Imabel was just crying after recording <laughs> that. She was just wiping out her eyes. <laughs> Is it obvious? <laughs> Can't tell, like you did a good job of masking it, but we know your true feelings and emotions. And it's totally okay, Mabel. It's just the overflowing love for the family. Yeah, so love your family, love everyone around you because we can only do this, make them feel loved while we're around and while they are around. And now I'll let you get back to crying. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. <laughs> Let me cry alone. <laughs>